Hello and welcome to the day ahead. It is Thursday, July the 28th. I'm Andrew Gagan. Well, to the overnight action on markets and Wall Street rallied on news the Fed hiked rates by 75 basis points with Chair Jerome Powell reassuring investors. Growth stocks were among the top performers as shares in Microsoft and Alphabet soared. The Nasdaq posting its largest one day percentage gain since April 2020. Communication services, IT and consumer discretionary led sector gains. Stock specifically, Meta missed on the top and bottom lines and gave concerning forecasts for the third quarter. The company's stock losing about half its value amid global pullback on ad spending. The company saying downgraded guidance reflects the continuation of the weak advertising demand environment. Boeing shares rose despite its second quarter results falling short. Aircraft deliveries rose to 121 in the second quarter from 79 a year ago, while commercial aircraft revenue climbed 3% to more than $6 billion. Ford shares were up on news that second quarter beat Wall Street estimates. The company's adjusted operating income more than tripling from a year ago when its production was hit hard by a global shortage of semiconductors. Ford reiterating its previous guidance for the full year but wouldn't comment on reports that it's planning layoffs. Well, the Federal Reserve has raised its key lending rate by three quarters of a percentage point as markets had forecast as it attempts to bring inflation under control. Fed Chair saying, Another unusually large hike may be necessary in September if price pressures have not eased. He's saying restoring price stability is just something we've got to do and that he says it isn't an option to fail to do that. Today's increase is the tar- in the target range is the second 75 basis point increase in as many meetings. While another unusually large increase could be appropriate at our next meeting, That is a decision that will depend on the data we get between now and then. Given the uncertainty and the sort of paradoxical flow of data you've been getting, if you're going to make a mistake, would you rather make the mistake on doing too much, raising too much, than raising too little? We're trying not to make a mistake. Let me put it this way. We we do see that there are two-sided risks. There would be the risk of doing too much and, and... uh, you know, uh, imposing more of a downturn on the economy than, than was necessary. But the risk, the risk of doing too little and leaving the economy with this entrenched inflation, it only raises the cost. If you fail to deal with it in the near term, it only raises the cost of, of uh, dealing with it later to the extent. All right. So the FOMC lifting the policy rate to a range of between two and a quarter and two and a half percent, while inflation is running at more than three times the central bank's two percent target. And he went on to say that Fed officials are acutely aware of the hardship that inflation imposes on American households. And he maintains that the U.S. economy continues to grow. I, don't, I do not think the U.S. is currently in a recession. Um, and the reason is there are just too many areas of the economy that are, that are performing, uh, you know, too well. And, and, of course, I would point to the labor market in, in particular, uh, as I mentioned, it's true that growth is slowing, and for reasons that we understand, really the growth was extraordinarily high last year, 5.5%. We would have expected growth to slow. There's also more slowing going on now. But if you look at the labor market, you've got growth, I think, payroll jobs averaging 450000 per month. That's a remarkably strong level for, for this state of, of affairs. The unemployment rate at near a 50-year low at 3.6%. All of the wage uh, measures that we track are running very strong. So this is a very strong labor market, and it's just not consistent with, you know, 2.7 million people hired in the first half of the year. Uh, It doesn't make sense that the economy would be in recession with with this kind of thing happening. So So underscoring that assessment is the U.S. trade deficit, which shrank uh, 5.5% in June as exports surged, while business spending on equipment remained strong, reducing the risk that the economy contracted for the second successive quarter. U.S. second quarter GDP figures will be released tomorrow. However, there are more negative signs in the housing sector, with pending home sales sliding a much greater than forecast 8.5% in June. U.S. Treasury yields eased off the back of Jerome Powell's comments that the Fed could slow the pace of interest rate increases at some point, the 10-year at 278 and the two-year falling below 3%. Major currencies gained against the U.S. dollar, the Aussie climbing above 70 U.S. cents that has since eased. Well, the local share market is expected to open strongly as a risk on sentiment flowed from the Fed's decision to raise rates aggressively. ASX futures currently up three quarters of a percent. 
Russia has uh, followed through with its warning that it's cutting gas flows to Europe, the Nord Stream 1 pipeline now at one-fifth of its capacity. U.S. crude exports surging to a record high last week, which saw stockpiles fall, pushing oil prices higher. Brent crude up more than 2%. The iron ore price is relatively stable, while copper and nickel prices rose on hopes of improving demand in China, and gold edged higher. And the risk on sentiment has boosted the crypto market, Bitcoin pushing above $22,000. Well, this morning, Rio Tinto shares will be in focus following the release of its results last night. Declining iron ore prices and rising costs led to a weaker than expected 29% drop in first half profit, while more than halving its dividend to $2.67 a share. The company attributed the fall to cooling demand from China, higher costs and labour shortages. And shares in BNPL firm Sezzle are in a trading halt pending an announcement after they almost doubled in trade yesterday. That does it. For today, we'll see you again tomorrow.